Hi, this is Robert. I want to congratulate you on purchasing your new vehicle, new to you that is, and specifically if you've purchased one of these Volvo uh, P80 series cars, which is the 850s and the uh, S and V70 series between uh, 1993 and year 2000. In this video, I'm going to show you the top things that you want to check to secure your investment on the purchase of this car. I've seen these vehicles go for more than 500,000 miles. So with some care, upkeep, and maintenance, you can have this car for many years to come. The absolute first thing you want to do is to verify if the timing belt has been replaced recently and that it's serviceable. The timing belt is located on the front of the motor. It's under this cover, and there should be a sticker here, here, or under the motor somewhere indicating when the timing belt was last replaced. Nonetheless, you want to have written proof verification that the timing belt has been replaced within the allotted time in the owner's manual. On the cars 1998 and prior, that's every seven years, 70,000 miles. Cars 1999 and newer, it's about 105,000 miles. But check that in your owner's manual, verify it. If you don't have an owner's manual, check the owner's manual online. Now this car, like many other newer vehicles, has what's called an interference motor. What that means is, if this car jump time or the timing belt breaks for any reason, it will cause damage to the head of the motor, requiring the motor to be rebuilt. So, some people say they can look down in here at the timing belt and see if it's any good or not. I think that's a myth. If you don't have written documented proof that it's been replaced, have it done. Now on these Volvos that I have, these 850s and S70s, if you look down at the water pump, you can see the cogs there on the pump. If the pump is missing teeth, that pump is probably original and should be replaced. I think water pumps should be replaced every 10 years. Uh, other than that, you have your belt, the water pump, the tensioner pulley, the idler pulley, and the tensioner if the tensioner is worn. So make sure all of those things have been replaced recently and that it's in serviceable condition so you don't lose your motor if the uh, timing belt breaks. I couldn't see any date stamps on the older water pumps, but the new water pumps do have a date stamp on them. So as you can see, here's a newer pump, no missing cogs. And when you look at the body of the pump, there's a date stamp there the 14th year, the fifth month. So, year, month on the date stamps. And these is the uh, OEM Volvo pumps, Azen, or they'll be marked Volvo. Again, my opinion, a visual inspection is insufficient. You need written, documented proof. Another thing you want to check is the heater core system. That is probably the number one death of these vehicles. Most of the vehicles I find in the salvage yard is probably there as a result of an overheated motor as a result of a failed heater core. If you look right there, you get your heater lines that go into the cabin area. And on the inside of the cabin is a heater core. The heater core is behind the dash. It's easy to access in most of these Volvos, but the problem is that it leaks down under the carpet where you may not know it. So my solution is if you don't have written documented proof that that heater core has been replaced, go ahead and replace it. You could get them as cheap as $40 ship and it's a, a 30 minute to 60 minute replacement. Very easy job. Protect your car from uh, overheating and losing its coolant rapidly through the heater core system. You come on the driver's side of the car, you peel the carpet down from around the gas pedal area. Then you'll see this plastic panel here. You remove that plastic panel from where it goes. Then you'll see the heater core. As you can see, this one has been modified. It'll be a little different from yours. Now, once you access this heater core area, you want to look at it real close for leaks. You want to check this carpet area down here for wetness under the carpet and this styrofoam here. And if that heater core is dark brown, more than likely it has never been changed. This one looks like it has been changed and is probably newer. But if it's dark brown, 
has probably never been changed, and you should change it as soon as you can. There's information in the about comments below to direct you in changing this heater core. And this is a heater core on these Volvos. And what happens is the seal and the seams start to lose. Or this plastic piece on the bottom could have a total failure, split open, and spill out all of the coolant in the car in a matter of a couple of minutes. Now the heating system in these Volvos is a full flow heating system and you cannot cut the coolant flow off to these heater cores. So if you select full cold, hot coolant is still flowing through this heater core. And if it leaks or it breaks, you'll lose all your coolant and overheat your motor. If I had to guess, I would say 7 out of 10 of the Volvos in the salvage yard are here because of motors overheating and many of those is because of heater core leaks and failures. Number three, check the serviceability of your PCV system. That means positive crankcase ventilation system. This system is a little strange to the Volvo cars, but it is a system that uh, controls emissions and, and circulates gases through the motor. But if this system is clogged, it can cause pressure to build up in the head, in the block of the motor. It can cause major oil leaks and uh, a rear main seal oil leak can be an end result, which is a very expensive repair. So what you want to do is you want to check this hose here. If this hose is hard as a rock, chances are it hadn't been replaced in a while. But if the car is warm and it's running, Sometimes you can pull the dipstick and if you see smoke coming out of the dipstick, it's probably in need of servicing. However, in severe conditions, that doesn't happen. So what I do is I remove the oil cap, I place a glove over the oil filler, and I start the car. If the glove inflates, the system is in need of replacement. Let me show you how that works. So the car is warm and it's running, and as you can see, there's a suction on this glove hole and if I accelerate, it'll try to suck in a little better. But if the system was in need of replacement, it would actually inflate that glove and blow that glove up. So you want to make sure that that's serviceable and replace it if necessary. As you can see, the glove is uh, inflating, so the system does need to be replaced or serviced. Now, some people actually try to clean the system out chances are the system is so clogged up and hard and brittle if you try to remove it to clean it out you're just going to break it and broken pieces are just as bad as clogged pieces so order your new kit and have it replaced the next thing i want to encourage you to do is to check your cooling system for old and deteriorated hoses replace any coolant hoses that need to be replaced because you do not want to play coolant roulette with these cars. A leaking hose can turn into a burst hose, which will cause you to lose coolant rapidly and overheat the motor. So you want to check to see if your hoses are soft and pliable. If you have a turbocharged car, find out how many hoses you have and replace the ones that are old. If your car is not turbo, you'll have less hoses, but you want to make sure that uh, you don't have any leaks. You check your level in your coolant bottle. If your coolant bottle is damaged, cracked up, stuff like that, replace it so that you can monitor that. Check it every couple of weeks. Make sure the level's not changing. And by all means, make sure you have coolant in the car and it's not straight water. Next thing you want to do is do an oil change if you don't have documented proof of the last oil change. And by all means, the primary reason to change the oil is to make sure that you have a Volvo or MAN oil filter installed on the car. MAN makes the oil filters for Volvo. They're inexpensive, less expensive than some of the ones you get at your big box store if you order them online. But you want to make sure that you have one of these filters on your car or one equivalent. I only recommend MAN or Volvo. These oil filters help keep oil on top of your motor when your motor's off so that when you do cold starts, it's not starved for oil from the oil draining back off the head. Good for your valve stem seals, good for your lifters. So change the oil, put the proper weight in there. If you're in a hot climate, I recommend 1040. 
If you're in a normal to cold climate, I recommend 1030. Do check your owner's manual, change your oil, and your filter. Another thing that's not highly recommended by others, but I highly recommend it, is checking and servicing your transmission. Now, look at the owner's manual or the link below for the proper way to check the transmission level. Check the transmission, make sure the fluids is high. A lot of people think they can properly gauge the color of the fluid by looking at the dipstick. To me, it's not a real good gauge. It may look red on the dipstick, you drain some of it out, and it's uh, brown as pond water. So anyway, I recommend you making sure the level is right and then changing the fluid as recommended in my link below. It's not a power flush with some kind of machine putting pressure on it, but it's a series of draining fields to refresh that fluid. I've seen these cars with more than 500,000 miles on the original transmission. So check and service your transmission. Next, I recommend if you don't have documentation on when the last tune-up was done, do a tune-up of the car. I only recommend installing Volvo plugs. They're a little bit more expensive, but they normally prevent ignition problems with these cars. Uh, if you look real close at the spark plug wires, if you have a car like mine, the spark plug wires actually have the date on them, the month and year. On my car, if you look down there, if it's showing it, I'm not sure if you can see it or not. Oh, there it is. It says the 29th week of the 10th year. And this is the brand of spark wires, spark plug wires that I recommend. Either these or Volvo. These cars are finicky with ignition parts, so I don't recommend that you get any other kind. So, you want your wires and plugs replaced? Uh, the plugs every 30,000, the wire, cap, and rotor every 100,000 miles or 10 years should be good. Right now, my car has 267,000 miles on it. So far this year, I've been cross-country uh, four times in this car. I trust it to crank up and go anywhere. So you can have a good, serviceable, long life with these cars. I plan on putting 500,000 on this one. Now. Other than those major things to keep the car serviceable and running right, you can check your battery. You can check uh, your other fluid levels like your brake fluid that can be serviced, your power steering fluid. Make sure your other hoses and things are in good shape. Check your motor mounts and just do other things that's necessary to bring the car up to speed and make it comfortable for you to drive for many years. If you got any questions, go ahead and post them. Thank you very much for watching. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.